welcome to the book of Exodus. We're at chapter 28, and we're going to do verses 15 to 29. How about that? Well, we're not going to read them all there because you don't need to see my mouth flapping that much. But let me just read a little bit of it here. Here we're talking about a breastplate of judgment. That's an interesting thing to call it, isn't it? You shall make a breastplate of judgment, the work of a skillful workman, like the work of the ephod. You shall make it of gold, of blue, of purple, and scarlet material, and fine twisted linen. You shall make it. And he goes on and talks about how it's folded and so on and so on. And there's many verses there, and you can certainly read them, but we're not going to read them all. In fact, one of the points I'm going to make is simply that when you look at all the different pieces of the furniture in the sanctuary, when you look at all the different priestly garments, among the priestly garments, more space is spent on this thing, this breastplate of judgment, than any other thing, just dramatically more space. So that also is an indicator in some measure of the importance of the breastplate of judgment. A high priest wears a breastplate, here it is called in verse 15, the breastplate of judgment. Some people have this picture, you know, of God. He doesn't do any judging, you know. Uh, he's he's uh, just, hey, come on in. Uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about a thing. Just come on in. You do, do whatever you want. By the way, I love you. Come on in. Uh, here's here's a, here's some cotton candy for you. Uh, we have some people. We have some people that have sort of a notion like that. That uh, basically anything goes. Love covers all things. Anything that's weird or backwards, it's okay. Don't worry about it. Love covers everything. There really is no judgment. Well, here's a breastplate of judgment, and we're right here associated with the removal of sin from the camp of Israel. This whole sanctuary system is about taking sin away. Remember that Jesus found the woman committing adultery. They brought her to him. They set her up, and then they brought her to him, and, and then he followed the plan from the Old Testament about, you know, your, your accusers have to be the first one to throw the stone. They, he begins writing in the sand, and apparently he was writing out their sins, and they begin to leave. They all leave, and he finally says to the woman, right, uh, where are your accusers? She says, well, there are, there's no man, Lord, and he says to her, what? Eh, don't worry about it. Come on. Let's do everything. No, he doesn't say that. He says, neither do I condemn you. And then he said, go and sin no more. So in other words, there was still judgment. There was still still right and wrong. She was still called, called up higher. Do not uh, in any way engage in sin. And so a breastplate of judgment, God discerns between the righteous and the unrighteous. He discerns between right and wrong, between evil and good. And the breastplate of justice, of, of, of judgment here, is a reminder to us that God's people, God doesn't give his people a free pass. He anticipates that we will become unselfish and loving and right toward other people if we're part of his kingdom. If we're part of his family, there will be godliness. And so, yes, the high priest who's dealing with the sin and giving atonement for Israel, setting that up with God, the high priest has a breastplate of judgment. Don't ever forget it. Notice here that the high priest, he represents Israel uh, he bears them on his heart. You know, part was on his shoulders. Now he's bearing the names of Israel on his heart. So lots of interesting bits here. As the high priest, he represents Israel to God and God to Israel. He symbolically represents this. He's highly representative. So let's not forget that piece in the totality either. But God's on your side. But he's not going to let you do mayhem. He wants you to do good things. And he's going to empower you to do them. God bless you and watch over you.